What is up everybody, Big Juicy Hog here and today we finally have the multiplayer reveal of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I am hyped as all heck right now and I'm just going to get into some of my thoughts on what I saw today. So the trailer was pretty hype as always, looked really nice. Uh, the early access will be October 8th on PlayStation which is going to be weekend number one and early access will be October 15th on Xbox, PC, and PlayStation which will be weekend number two. Uh, as per the last time, PlayStation gets an extra weekend that the rest of us don't get because of stupid exclusivity deals. Aside from that, uh, if you don't pre-order, you will be able to play on the second weekend. Everyone will play on October 17th, my birthday, to the 19th. So I know what I'm going to be doing for my birthday. Alright, I'm going to get into some of the things that they revealed. They revealed several different maps. They revealed one called Satellite, which was an American satellite that crashed in Angola. The way the map is set up, it's kind of an open type map with a bunch of caves around one side of it, some open desert on the other, and a crashed fuselage from a satellite just in the middle of the map that you can run through, kind of like uh, some of the old maps. The second map we had was in the North Atlantic Ocean. I believe it's called Armada. It was one of the 12v12 vehicle maps. It's the one with all the boats. There'll be some gameplay on that later, but you basically have some multiple boats and there's uh, capture points such as like on control. So there's points in the water, there's points on the boats, and you have to duke it out in different areas, including on vehicles to do what you need to do. Then there's Moscow, which was a nice traditional looking Call of Duty city map. Miami, which was the map that was leaked in the gameplay from Doug is Raw, who was missing from this event so i wonder what happened with that but miami is a nice looking night map with multiple areas to engage indoors and outdoors and it looks pretty good and then there was crossroads which is a larger map looks very open at first i thought it was going to be another 12v12 with the tanks and other vehicles i think there are going to be tanks and i think maybe they will have that game mode on there but also it's going to have one of the new game modes on there which i'll talk about later as far as game modes go, all of the classic modes will be returning of course, including stuff like Team Deathmatch, Domination, Control will be back. There is a cool new mode called VIP Escort. A player who is going to be the VIP is going to supposed to be kept alive at all costs. The VIP just gets a pistol and some sort of support equipment and the goal of the game is to extract the VIP or if you're on the other side, kill the VIP. The other new game mode that we saw was Combined Arms, which I talked a little bit about with the Armada map, which was the boat map. It's a 12 versus 12 vehicle based game mode that will be capture point based, so it'll be a control type game or a domination type game. So on to some of the more juicy stuff, we got Create a Class. There will be no more Pick 10, so you're not going to have to get rid of some of the stuff that you really wanted to keep to add some other stuff. There's not going to be as much of a trade off as there traditionally was with Call of Duty systems. It's going to be a completely slot based system. You get your primary weapon, you get your secondary weapon, you get a lethal, a tactical, a field upgrade, and your perks. So you don't have to pick which ones to drop which will make things a little bit simpler for players and I am hoping that this will make it a lot easier for casuals and maybe this will go towards not having as tough of skill based matchmaking by making it so more experienced players that know what's good and what's not don't have a huge advantage by actually min maxing their class. So you have field upgrades which are kind of like a support type score streak in a way but you only earn them based on the amount of time in the game. It's not based on how good you're doing or anything like that. So they have stuff such as a field mic, which I'm assuming will uh, amplify the sound of people running around near you. They have SAM turret, which is obviously for shooting down streaks, and the proximity mine. Those are all going to be field upgrades. One thing that's really cool is returning is the wild cards. So there's going to be four different wild cards. You get to choose one of these. Uh, the first one is you can have eight attachments on your primary weapon, which is pretty huge. Uh, you can have six perks, which is also huge. The third one is double lethals and tacticals. So if you want to be one of those campy dudes, 
Uh, you can have extra lethals and tacticals, or you can carry three primary perks from any mix of categories. So I'm assuming that means you can take all three of the perks from category one or category two or whatever. So for example, if they have like ghost and ninja in the same one, you can pick both of those instead of having to just pick one. So I think that's really cool to bring back wild cards. It adds a lot of variety to your builds and you will probably try out a little bit of everything and maybe have one on one class, one on another. It'll be really something I think that's going to be nice for the game. One of the actual good things about Modern Warfare, one of the few things I actually liked is in fact back and that is the gunsmith. Every gun in the game is going to have 54 attachments for eight different attachment slots. It shows you the pros and cons of each attachment, as well as how it affects the stats, how many mags you have, how many rounds per mag. The stats they have on the guns are firepower, speed, accuracy, and ammo. Now one thing it looks like they're going to do a lot better than Modern Warfare did with their system, and granted, Modern Warfare was the first one to do it, so there was going to be some growing pains. They look like they simplified it, so it actually makes sense when you look at it. If there's special effects that they do, it's listed, such as more damage to vehicles and then it gives you actual numbers and the bar is pretty self-explanatory if you put on attachment that gives you plus firepower you're going to do more damage if you get one that gives you more ammo you're going to get more ammo it's not as confusing as the modern warfare version was sometimes now score streaks this is something that's new this is something that will also help those newbie players, and I'm hoping that it's something that's also going to tone back the skill-based matchmaking. So, some people won't like this, but you're going to keep your score through death with score streaks. You will earn your score streaks eventually, even if you suck ass. I guess if you suck ass that bad, you won't get any score streaks, but if even if you do mediocre, you're probably going to get your score streaks. It's going to take longer, and you're not probably going to get to cycle through them as easily. So you get bigger score bonuses for the longer your kill streaks are. So if you're on a 10 kill streak, you're going to be able to get your streaks a lot faster than someone who's got two kills, died once, died, you know, two times, got three kills. It's going to be a lot easier to get your streaks as you kill more. It's got a multiplier, I believe. So obviously you earn bonuses faster by killing and not dying. That's pretty self-explanatory for any Call of Duty. It is a kind of different system. And apparently to avoid score streak spam, they decided that there will be a cooldown on the score streaks. So you won't be able to just chain them as much as you did in the previous Black Ops games. However, it looks like you'll still be able to chain your streaks over time, which is an improvement over Modern Warfare. That was one of the bad things about Modern Warfare. Besides the fact that these streaks in Modern Warfare were absolutely terrible is that you couldn't keep them going. If you got all your streaks, you had to purposely die if you wanted to get your streaks again, which makes absolutely no sense. It's completely counterintuitive to how you play the game. Another thing they apparently added was counter score streaks, which will be there to take out some streaks. As we already knew, Warzone is going to be back, and it said that the Cold War progression that you make will actually also be reflected in Warzone. And a lot of the stuff that you got in Modern Warfare, you'll be able to keep into this version of Warzone. So you maybe won't be able to keep everything, but there will be a lot of stuff that you will be able to keep. So you don't have to worry about that too much if you're a Warzone player. There will, of course, be a battle pass and an item shop. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. Um, I do like the battle pass. I think that if you like the game, the battle pass is awesome. If you don't like the game, you don't have to get the battle pass. It's not a big deal. And they're, they're going to have the item shop. Of course, they're going to have cosmetic items that you can buy. That's not a big deal. I don't care. If you want to look cool and you want to pay some money for it, have at it. As long as it's not pay to win and it's not stupid ass loot boxes, I'm down with it. One thing is, of course, crossplay is coming back, so you will have to play against PC players as a console player. I assume you can probably turn it off, but then you'll end up with small lobbies, just like you did with this one, or just like you did with Modern Warfare, which didn't make a lot of sense considering how many players actually play on each console. Crossplay will be back for better or for worse, which means in Warzone especially, you're probably going to have cheaters. So let's get into some of my impressions of the gameplay. The 12v12 game mode looks pretty interesting. It looks like a fun and smaller kind of version of Ground War. Obviously a lot smaller than Ground War. Uh, on the Armada map, they had zip lines going from boat to boat, and they had a lot of vehicles in the water. You had little gunboats, there's turrets on the ships. 
it's really a kind of a cool looking mode and I think it could be a lot of fun to just to casually go in there and derp around with your friends. While I was watching it, I noticed the gunplay and movement looked pretty crispy. It looked a lot better than Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare, you remember how slow the aim down sight speed was? You couldn't run and slide around. It was very campy. This looked the exact opposite. It looked like a Call of Duty game and it's something I'm very excited about and I can't wait to get into it. Another thing that is back and we can rejoice, we already knew that it was coming back. The standard mini-map is here and it looks like it's here to stay. And the most exciting part of the mini-map, and I believe me, I looked close when I was watching this gameplay. Red dots are back on the mini-map. So if someone shoots and they don't have a silencer on their gun, you are going to know where they're at. The next map that we ended up seeing was some kill confirmed on satellite. And like I said before, it's a relatively open map with caves and a downed satellite on it. It looks a little bit like a Destiny map to me. Obviously not as spacey, I guess, but it looked a little bit like a Destiny map in the way that it was set up. The graphics is something that I noticed. It looks a lot better than people were reporting. I know some people were saying it looked potato-like. Actually, I think the graphics are every bit as good as Modern Warfare was. So it may just have been the people that they had playing which of course were top players, pros, streamers, stuff like that. But it was a little concerning watching it with the amount of sniper use I was seeing. Treyarch games are usually known for pretty OP snipers and they looked pretty good in this one as well. There were a lot of players using them, but we'll see when the game comes out. The unlimited sprint is back, so movement actually looks like a Call of Duty game. You don't look like a you know, a 400 pound diabetic running around. <gasps> I better stop and get my breath back because I ran for two seconds. Makes military people look bad, like they can't run for more than five seconds without getting completely winded and having to walk. I was loving the score and metal notifications as they popped up. They looked very clean and nice. Not really a big thing, but something that I enjoyed. The sound sounded pretty good. Now obviously there were people talking over it so I couldn't get the full sound experience but I think that it sounded a lot better than it did in Modern Warfare. For one, the footsteps didn't sound like a caveman wearing concrete shoes tap dancing on the wooden deck of a pirate ship. That's what everyone running around in Modern Snorfare sounded like. Just clomp, 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 clomp. There was no getting, there's no even sneaking up on someone in Modern Warfare. You could be duck walking and it sounded like you were break dancing. Another thing that I saw during this map was there are health bars on the score streaks, which is kind of interesting. So you kind of can get a visual indicator on how much damage you actually need to do to finally take out that streak. So if you're hitting it with the launcher and it has a little bit of health left, you can actually switch over to your primary and finish it off without worrying about it. And you can also see if your stupid ass teammates are doing any damage to it. So that's a positive. Next map we saw was some domination on Miami. Now, it had a pretty sweet Miami Vice vibe. I kind of hope that I can bust out with the Don Johnson white jacket and pink shirt as one of my loadout options, but I kind of doubt it. Reminded me a lot of Plaza from Black Ops 2, which was one of the all-time great and most underrated maps in my opinion. Another thing I noticed during the gameplay, since this was Domination, is the Domination flag areas are a lot bigger. So, you know, in most standard domination modes, there's like a little ring around the flag. You have to stand on that. Well, there's a big ass square now. So you can run around the area a little bit, defend it, kind of get some cover. And it's a lot easier to contest. So I think that's a huge improvement to domination. In some games, it was almost impossible to capture that B flag just because it was in the middle of nothing. There's no cover and people just staring over it. That said, the B flag on this map looked very open. It looks like it'd be kind of hard to take it once one team has it. However, there were cars and stuff in the B flag area, so you might be able to get in there and make a play. So on this map, we actually got to see some of the big streaks. I got to see the chopper gunner a couple times. So when I initially saw the chopper gunner, it looked pretty rough. I didn't see any red boxes around the enemy, but I think what happened is that entire team must have had cold-blooded equipped or something like that. There wasn't a lot of kills, and there are a lot of buildings in this map, so depending on what side you're flying on, you might not be able to hit anybody. 
However, I saw Scumpy get it a little bit later, and you could see all the red outlines on the player, so maybe just his team initially had cold-blooded and the other team didn't, because he absolutely dookied on those players. Another thing that watching this gameplay I really enjoyed is I loved seeing no doors. If you see a door, that shit don't open. Jericho was confirming it on the stream itself, and Treyarch kind of low-key took a duke on Modern Warfare's doors, making fun of it, making the stupid sound effects, the ka-clunk, duk duk oh look, I ran through another door, oh, sound effects are awesome, I can hear everything across the map. Looks like there's going to be multiple areas to kind of fight from, depending on what your playstyle is, so if you're more of an indoors kind of player, someone that wants to run and gun and get into those small areas and win gunfights, you can do that. Or you can play in the outdoors. There's some windows and stuff to snipe from. It looks like a really good map for any kind of play style. Uh, one thing that I saw during the gameplay was uh, one of the players, a team that was getting their butt kicked, decided he wanted to go swimming. And somehow on the diving board of the pool, he was able to do a super jump into the pool. So I don't know how that exactly works, but it was kind of funny. And apparently, according to one of the streamers, there are also sharks on Miami, so I don't know if you can go in the water and get ate by them or what, or you can shoot them or whatever, but it'd be kind of cool if you can interact with them some way, or if they can just interact with you. Would be really funny. Next map up we had was Team Deathmatch on Moscow. It's a nice looking Call of Duty map. It reminded me a little bit of the police station map from Black Ops 4, which was one of the better DLC maps that they came out with in my opinion. One thing I was noticing in the gameplay, it gave me a little bit of a laugh, was it looked like there was a mirror inside one of the buildings. And I was watching a streamer, he went in, he saw a guy, he started shooting the dude, but then the guy ran around a corner, he turns, and then he starts shooting again, but I'm pretty sure he was shooting himself in the mirror and the other guy came back and just dropped him. So that was pretty funny. So that's something to watch out for if you're on the Moscow map. You might try to kill yourself or scare the shit out of yourself in the mirror. Another thing I noticed while watching this map is it looks like the stun grenades need a little bit of adjusting. I noticed several times where streamers were throwing their stun grenades and they would duck behind a corner. And even though they ducked behind the corner, they were stunning themselves or they were stunning themselves from really far away, which was kind of weird. Uh, obviously, one of the things that I've been really enjoying watching the new gameplay is seeing colors. There were colors in these maps besides gray, brown, and gray. Because those are the only colors that were in Modern Warfare. Gray, brown, and gray. There might have been variations. Light gray, dark gray, dark brown, light brown, shit brown. Gray, brown, and gray. Those are the other colors. Uh, this was the first time I got to see the War Machine in action. It looks like if you fire a shot, you'll lose it after death, but if you summon it and you haven't fired a shot yet, I think you'll still retain it through your next life. It looked like you get 12 shots, and it's a one-shot kill. The gameplay I saw of it looked pretty strong, but it looks like it can be countered by the Flak Jacket perk. Next map was Hardpoint on satellite map once again. The hard points in this are a little bit different, and then now it shows you where you're going next. Before, part of the strategy of Hardpoint was knowing where the hard points were spawning and trying to get there before the other team. It makes sense now if it's going to show where it is. You don't have to rush over there ahead of the other team, or it gives the teams a little bit more of a competitive evenness. So in a way, it's uh, it's like adding skill-based matchmaking without adding skill-based matchmaking. Because part of the skill of that game type was being able to know where all the map spawns are. So you get there and get points before the other team. But now if you have two evenly matched teams, the knowledge of where the spawns are is not going to matter. So I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I don't play a lot of Hardpoint. I do find it somewhat fun, but I'm more of a TDM kind of guy. So another thing I noticed while watching this, and maybe it's because I'm a, a dumbass and I don't pay attention to this kind of stuff, but I noticed that up by the mini-map, it shows the name of the specific area that you're in. So for example, you could be running around and it'd be like some kind of cave that you're in. It would say the name of that cave. Or if you were at the satellite, it would say satellite. So if you're in a competitive game mode and you get killed by somebody, you can make accurate callouts without having to study some kind of outside game map or come up with your own names for each thing. It is actually in game right next to the mini map, right next to the compass that probably nobody is ever going to use ever again. 
another thing I noticed is if you get the chopper gunner on this map, you are going to drop a giant deuce right in your opponent's mouth. There is nowhere to hide and you are just going to have a bad time. To me, that's a good thing, because guess what? Your streaks are actually getting kills. Unlike Modern Warfare, where you get a streak, you get a seven kill streak, and you're lucky if your stupid ass Harrier Jet gets two kills. That's like a good Harrier Jet, two kills. So the last one I'm going to talk about is the VIP Escort on Crossroads. It's the new game mode and the new map. Uh, Crossroads is kind of a wide open map that I talked about earlier. It's a snow map, which of course everyone always seems to love. Looked like there's a lot of bunkers throughout the map, a lot of open areas to go through, and it looked like a pretty decent map overall. I'm assuming you'll be able to do 12v12 on it as well, but the game mode that I was watching was VIP Escort. So in this game mode, only the VIP can get score streaks. So you'll have like a UAV or whatever, spy plane, I think they call it in this game. You can pop that up to help your team. No one else can get score streaks. Obviously, score streaks would be completely busted in this game mode. If someone earned a chopper gunner, that's a free round win. So it is an elimination-based mode with revives. So you can get downed like in Blackout from Black Ops 4, and you can crawl over to the person, like your teammate, and they can revive you. If you don't get thirsted, as they put it, you'll be able to get back into the fight. Actually, it looks kind of fun. I'm not a big fan of these kind of modes. I don't really like elimination game modes in Call of Duties. The only game I really loved it in was the original Trials of Osiris for Destiny. But this one actually does look like a lot of fun. I could see having a lot of fun with your friends on it. And the way you win in this game mode is you win by either eliminating the other team, you kill the VIP, if you're defending, or you extract the VIP onto the chopper. So that's pretty much all of my impressions so far from the new Call of Duty gameplay reveal. I can't wait to play this game, honestly. I am so tired of Modern Warfare. I can't even watch Modern Warfare content. My favorite YouTubers don't even do Modern Warfare content, which I'm grateful for because I don't want to see it in my feed. But this looks like going back to what Call of Duty is all about, and I just can't wait to try it. So if you like my videos, feel free to click on any of the other ones. Leave a comment down below. What did you think of the reveal? And are you as hyped about it as I am? Anyways, guys, I will catch you in the next video.